So I've got really quite a funny story to tell you. Last year, as many of you know, was the International Year of the Periodic Table. And during the year, I've been going around all sorts of places, giving essentially a very similar lecture about the periodic table. And the lecture takes the form of a tour round my office at the University of Nottingham, showing you some of the periodic tables that I've got. And one particular thing I show is a periodic table from the Royal Australian Chemical Institute, which was devised for the International Year of Chemistry nine years ago. And artists from Tasmania painted pictures of all sorts of different elements. And one of the artists sent me a picture of the element gallium. Now, I explained that this picture is a joke on several different levels. You can see it's got a cockerel in the middle, which is the symbol of France. Gallium is named after France, after the Latin name for France, Gaul. It's also a joke because the Latin word for a chicken is gallus. So you have the French symbol and the pun in Latin. And then there's a third joke because the chemist who discovered or at least isolated gallium for the first time was called le coq, which is the French for cockerel. So there's a third joke. Now, if you look at the top right hand corner, there's a radioactive symbol. And for all these lectures, I've each time saying I have no idea why that symbol is there. And then my last lecture, which was just over a month ago, just before the lockdown, one of the people in the audience was the boyfriend of one of our Nottingham students. And she told him about the lecture, and so he came along. And after the lecture, he thought of an explanation of the radioactive symbol and got the student to email it to me. And his explanation was really quite funny and really unusual and involves chickens. He pointed out that in the late 1950s, the British army in Germany had a mad scheme to stop the Russians invading Germany if they tried. And their scheme was to bury nuclear bombs under the ground. And the idea was that if the Russians invaded, these bombs could be blown up. So these were nuclear landmines, but really quite powerful, nearly as powerful as the dreadful bomb that destroyed Hiroshima in Japan. Unfortunately, there was a technical problem that when you buried these mines, these nuclear mines under the ground in winter, they could get cold and the electronics, which in those days were quite primitive, might stop working. Now, you have to realise these bombs were really large, the size of a large freezer, if not bigger. There was really quite a lot of space inside the casing. And so the proposed solution to this freezing of the electronics was to put some grain and some water and a chicken, a live chicken, inside the bomb case before you buried it. It was worked out that the chicken would live for about a week before it died. And that was long enough because if the invasion hadn't taken place within a week, you could dig up the mine and recharge it. The idea was that the chicken would produce enough body heat just to keep the electronics warm. Presumably when it died, it would become a frozen chicken. Professor, what would happen to the chicken if they ended up having to set the bomb off? Well, the chicken would have been evaporated together with much of the rest of the surrounding area. All right, so then you get a roast chicken. Well, I think you would get a vaporised chicken, if not an atomised chicken. 
Although the British are very sentimental about animals, I don't think they were worried about the chicken. This whole project was called Operation Blue Peacock. The boyfriend's explanation was that this radioactive symbol referred to Operation Blue Peacock because, of course, there's a chicken on the painting. And the, and the, also the piece of artwork is quite blue in colour, isn't it? Yes. So I thought this was really clever. And I also thought that it demonstrated quite a nice point about scientific experiments, that when you're building some expensive, some complicated piece of equipment, you need to spend a lot of money on the key parts. But for the less important parts, you can use really quite a simple device just to achieve whatever you want. In this case, using a chicken as a heater. What do you think of that idea, Professor? I think it's completely mad. But I think in the end it was also considered mad by everybody because it was never implemented. However, and the really nice twist to this story, is I suddenly thought I could Google the Australian website and see what the artist said about this radioactive symbol. And it turns out that the explanation's really boring. It's a reference to the use of radioactive gallium in medicine for some sort of treatment or diagnosis. So the blue peacock, although true, was completely irrelevant. And that demonstrates another really important principle of science, which was propounded in medieval times and is called Occam's razor. Occam is the guy who thought of it, and razor is the thing that you use for shaving. And Occam's razor says when you have some effect, some problem, and you have two explanations, one that's simple and the other that's complicated, it's usually the simple one that is correct. So this picture has given me great pleasure because it taught me about Operation Blue Peacock that I knew nothing about and gave me a nice reminder about Occam's razor. Professor, you mentioned that they didn't end up using the chickens because they thought it was probably a mad idea. Did they actually end up using the nuclear mines to, in case of the Russian invasion or did that not happen either? No, I think they didn't. They, they thought the idea of the nuclear mines was a bad idea and therefore they didn't need the chickens. I don't think the people who were responsible for strategy went down to the level of the chickens inside the bomb. So the question you didn't ask me and which really intrigues me is what happened if the chickens started laying eggs inside the bomb? Would that have upset the electronics. 